demonstrator in Basking Ridge, New Jersey, and I go live every Wednesday at three o'clock Eastern time to share with you some of the things that I've been working on, some upcoming events, I don't know, all different kinds of things. Um, and I am here with you today with a preview from the new catalog that is launching on, uh, let's see, May 1st. So it's just a couple of weeks away, right? I guess two weeks from today. So we're very excited about it. And this is one of my favorite products from the catalog. I've been hinting at it for a while. I think I showed it to you, but I didn't show you how to use it yet. Uh, and this is the Layers of Beauty bundle. The bundle includes masks and dyes as well as the stamps. And let's go ahead and take a look. Flip over so you can see. Okay, well, here's my desktop, but let's take a look. So the, the stamp set called Layers of Beauty includes this gorgeous, sketchy kind of uh, floral arrangement and a couple of little extras there. One of my favorite things about this set is that it has a happy anniversary. Those are sometimes a little bit hard to come by. Um, so I was very grateful to see that. And this is a Million Dollar Achiever set. So one of our Million Dollar Achievers uh, designed this for us. I'm sorry I didn't look that up before we started. Um, maybe I can do that in a little bit. But in addition to the stamp set, when you get the bundle, you get all of these fabulous dies with it. And some of mine are upside down because I've been using them. But this largest one is used to cut out this different, this nice floral arrangement okay it's obviously not an actual size but you'll see that in a minute because this is exactly what we're going to be using uh, it has some extra leaves and some ways to cut out other flowers see this one here these two go together um, and just some extra leaves to put in the background and this adorable little tag which goes very well with the little god bless um, and the, uh, the second favorite thing that I love about this is that it includes this single die that actually cuts out this flower. Okay, again, it's not lined up, and we're going to see that later, but that's the idea behind that. So not only do you get the Layers of Beauty stamp set and the Layers of Beauty dies, but the bundle also includes five masks. And we've used masks before in my classes, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how these work. Um, and I love the fact that they all are in order. They are numbered in the corners along with a notch. And I'm going to show you some tricks on how to, to use this. But you can see that I've already been playing. Um, and so this is the card that we're going to make today. So isn't that beautiful? I just, I love the idea that it's using the Pretty in Pink, which is one of the new pinks, as well as the Petunia Pop, which is the new purpley pink, um, as well as some greens, and that they are brighter colors as opposed to subtle colors, which I could have easily done. You can do it in any shades, right? Any complementary colors. These are, when I did the roses, I used three, uh, three shades of pinky purples, um, but you could easily use, you know, totally different colors like yellow and uh, pink together, etc. So I'll let you play with that. Actually, I'm sure I'm going to be playing with that coming up soon. So let's go ahead and make this card. So we're going to start with the Petunia Pop paper. And of course, that's over on my desktop. Didn't roll it over. Right here. Okay, so we have our, <laughs> I have to throw it. Um, so this is our card base and this is Petunia Pop, one of the brand new in colors that will be coming in the catalog that launches in two weeks. Fold it in half and, well, cut in half and then fold it in half. And then I have a few sheets of, um, with uh, basic white cardstock that we're gonna be using for layering, as well as a piece of pretty in pink, um, cardstock a second new in color so you can see that this one I've already gone ahead and embossed with the exposed brick embossing folder this is not a new embossing folder it is carrying over you can purchase this today um, I believe the prices of some of these items are going up so if you wanted to get it at the current price as opposed to the raised price come um 
come May 1st, you can do that today. So anyway, but this is the exposed brick embossing folder. Okay, so not a lot of supplies here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just adhere this to my card front. As you all know, I like to use wet glue when I am adhering something that is embossed or adhering to something that is embossed. So I'm gonna use my wet glue my green glue as we sometimes refer to it. Put that to the side and get that right onto our front. And it just gives the nice background uh, for the card. Now I could have done it in a, a different neutral, which would also be pretty, but I, I don't know. I'm just in a pinky purple mood ever since they came back with the pretty in pink, which was an old color that we had for a very long time. And then the new petunia pop. So I love the way that that looks. On the inside of the card, I'm gonna take one of those white panels and put it on the inside. And I'm just gonna use my stamp and seal. Very excited to have refilled all my stamp and seals. They were unavailable for a little while. Oh, I didn't know what I was doing. It was terrible, but I have replaced them all. So now I can use that on camera and we're putting that on the inside of the card. So that is our card base. I'm going to go ahead and put that to the side because that's very basic stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to take another piece of the basic white card stuff. Now this piece is sized to be five by five and a quarter by four, which is the same as what I use on the inside of my cards. And this panel on the front is also the same size. Um, the stamp that we are using is has all those flowers on it. And so you can see we need to use one of the very largest uh, blocks. This is block letter F, okay? So it is the largest acrylic block that we have. And that is what you need to use in order to be able to stamp the whole image all at once. So that is something to note that you would need that if you have the old Stamparatus or something like it, you can always use that as well. I'm going to use our Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I am going to ink this up. Now you see I'm doing it upside down. My ink pad is smaller than my stamp so I always like to put the ink on the stamp upside down just like so okay and I'm just making sure I've got all my edges and everything and little trick that I use I want to put it down on my scratch paper and I'm going to lay my paper over it now I could have just you know come on top and aimed and hoped that I got all the pieces uh, covered but I don't trust myself I don't always do very well with that but now that I've done that I like to make sure I get all, all the little um, edges and even though I'm going to be cutting this out um, what I like to do is just take the scratch paper put it over the top now you could use a separate piece of scratch paper to do this um, I was actually going to do that I forgot but this is how I normally do it um, I just reverse my scratch paper and then I peel off my image and you can hear that it go, you know, kind of stuck to it. Now, I probably would have aimed that a little bit better, but my camera is in my way. So I'm a little off center, but that's okay because I am going to be cutting this out. Okay, so now that we have this image, let's get to how we color this. Now, a couple of important things. Um, I like to use washi tape to adhere my paper to my surface. The background surface and in this case it's my um, my paper here my scratch paper and I'm just going to adhere it in one spot that's all I need I, you don't really need to go crazy um, but that way the piece of paper is always in the same space and now when I use my mask so this is mask number one you see the number one up here yep there you kind of saw that there one and this little notch okay you want to find that make sure that's on the front so that you have your mask facing up and I put a little bit of washi tape there too all the washi tape I use is you know former stampin up washi tape and then we need to find to line this up now this is the first mask and this is the only one that you really have to work at lining up but I like to make sure that I get these two in the center and then start turning from there so you see I've got 
my big flowers and I'm turning it. And as I turn, I'm looking at my smaller flowers as well. So I'm trying to make sure that they all line up nicely. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can get it pretty close on this. And then I'm just pushing down my washi tape. I could have taken a brand new piece, put it there. Okay, so that now everything is settled. One more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pen and I am going to mark exactly where my notch is. Okay, you could use a, a marker or something uh, depending upon how messy your scratch paper is, but I just do a little mark there and that's going to help me line things up later. Okay, so now that we have this down, we can get to um, coloring. So let me just grab my brushes, which I unfortunately put away a second ago. Always something. Oh, they're right next to me. Unbelievable. I had them the whole time. Okay, so I'm going to start with our lightest color, which in this case is pretty in pink. Open it up, and I'm using five different colors. You don't have to have five different coordinating colors, but I, for the purposes of demonstration, wanted to use five different colors. Then I'm taking a blending brush, and this is what I call my pink blending brush, uh, so that you can, uh, I always use it for my pinks. So glad you like that helpful hint there, Dawn. Nice to see you. Um, so what I like to do is just make sure I've got my color off and you can see that nothing's coming off. So this is again my lightest color. I'm going to tap, tap, tap onto my ink pad and then I'm going to tap off because I want to make sure this is pretty light. Now what I find that people tend to do is use a very hand, ugh, very heavy hand right from the start. And I don't like that. You can always go darker, you can't go lighter, right? So I am just brushing this on and I want the pink to be nice and pale. Now this new pink is old pink, <laughs> pretty in pink. Um, it has a whole different tone than our bubble bath, which came out last year, that was a nice soft baby pink. But this is even even better, I think. Uh, it's funny how the, when the colors evolve, how you, and then you go back and you say, oh my, that was really pretty and I miss it. So I peeled off my mask. You saw that it shifted a little bit. So I just stopped rubbing at that point. I peel off my mask. I fold the little piece down so that I can reuse it again. And I put it to the side. So here I have it all colored in uh, from the way that mask was designed. Let's move on to mask number two. And for mask number two, I'm going to use a slightly darker pink, actually much darker. And then I'm gonna just get my washi tape ready and watch what happens. Remember that notch? Here's the notch on number two. Let's go ahead and line that up. And it, I have a hard time getting it perfect the first time. So at least I'm in the ballpark, right? So here I am, I am just shifting it around and just making sure that I am getting some of the things lined up that should be. So I'm aiming for these flowers over here and these little flowers here. And that's what's helping me decide if I'm lined up. This one too would be good to line up. Okay, I have it in place, fabulous. I'm gonna move on to Petunia Pop. Now I'm gonna use the same brush because I'm still using pink. So this is my pink brush. I wipe it off, tap, 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 get now this is a lot darker, right? So I've, oh gosh, I've uh, tapped it off. I shifted, even though it shouldn't be shifting. I pushed it hard enough that it did. So, okay, so I've got it nice and not too dark because if you go, look how dark it is already, right? So it is a dark color. So here we go. I'm just rubbing it in and Wait till you see what this does. I think some, most of you have kind of an idea because this is not um, something that's new anymore. We've This is actually our third set of masks that work like this. And I love every single one of them. So ready? Voila. Look at that shading and how pretty that looks. Okay. 
and it really was very easy. So I'm going to move on to my next mask, which is number three, and this puts the finishing touches on the pink. And so again, I have my washi tape over here. I'm going to line up. Oops, let me get rid of my ink pad so we don't get confused. Uh, and I'll line up my notch over here. I also, I, first of all, I have a camera in my way and I'm also wearing my glasses so I can't see quite as well. Uh, different glasses. Um, so it's, I just need to help shift it around a little bit. And on this one, what I'm trying to line up are the little centers of these flowers, okay? So that's what I'm going for on these. You can do what works for you, but that's just how I, I've been able to do it. And I, like I said, I've done it quite a few times already. See how that lined up? Press it down. And then I'm going to move on and I've got my Berry Burst ink pad. Okay, same blending tool. Tap, tap, tap. Now on this one, I'm going to brush off a little bit, make sure I get it. I did it again. Oh my goodness. Keep knocking into it. So obviously if I would use more washi tape, it would stay better, but I was just trying to avoid making a total mess here. So here I am and I'm just, I'm making sure this one is nice and dark. And because I know um, this is the last of my shading, it's the finishing touches on my pink. So I don't even need to tap off much, if at all, to make sure that I've got that nice deep dark color. And just love how this works. So this gives us three shades of pink on our roses. Okay, and look at that. Yay! I just love the way that it looks and it's so quick and easy um, and it makes me feel artistic where I never would have come up with the shading on my own. That's just me. And again, you could have just used uh, Pretty in Pink and done the entire layers all just with the Pretty in Pink and they would progressively get darker. And so that's a really pretty look too. And maybe we'll do that another time. Okay, so now we have to do our leaves. So for our leaves, taking out our number four template, doing the same thing, lining it up. And this one, it's our first time with the greens, so I'm just lining up all my leaves. But at least I was in the ballpark, right, by lining up my little notch there. I'm going to press this down, and this time I'm going to try not to move it. And I'm going to go with my lemon lime twist. Now, for this one, I am going to change my blending tool to my green blending brush. Imagine that. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up my color. This is such a nice light green. So I am brushing it. Now you see I do hold on to the mat. I don't trust the washi tape and I don't trust myself uh, to not get it shifted. So I always hold it just to make sure. Of course it makes the entire desktop shake so I do apologize I'm realizing that everything you see is all shaky and then I'm sorry for that but anyways here we go so we've got our green so that gets all our leaves look at that you could just leave it like that or you could add another tone of green and this time I'm going to use granny apple green because I love the way that those look together so make sure your mask is the right side up I've got number five in the corner I've got my washi tape on the side. I'm going to line up my notch over here in the corner. And then I'm going to line up my leaves again. Again, it wasn't perfect, uh, again, because of where my camera is, etc. But um, at least I was in the ballpark. Very easy to get it lined up. Green apple green. Green brush. Shift a little bit and now I'm holding it down and this one again I want it to be nice and dark to contrast with the light green that we just did so I'm not worrying about tapping too much but whoa that was a little much so I did just re-ink this ink pad so maybe it's not hasn't soaked in and spread enough um, I was finding that it was running out so we don't like to do that tap it off just a little bit but you can see that we're going to have different shades of green and actually that's kind of cool too some are really dark some are a little less dark my washi tape is moving you might have to replace your washi tape after a few times depending upon how hard you go but look at that isn't that awesome i just love the way that this looks 
So I've now finished with my coloring and it's time to make my card. So what I'm going to do is take my, uh, we're going to use a little magic of television, <laughs> but I'm going to take this piece and we are going to die cut it out using the large die. And you can see, it might take a second to figure out how to line it up, but you want to get everything in place. And since we've got washi tape out, it is so much easier if you go ahead and tape that together. So again, I'll just peel off a piece. And washi tape is just, um, you know, it's a Japanese tape that is kind of just like a post-it note, if you will. So it holds it in place and take it over to my die cutting machine. And this is what we come back with. How pretty is that? All cut out. The way if you had to do this by hand, that would be really difficult. And then we're going to take that other die that I told you about that cuts out just the flower. And that we're going to line up over the one that we've already cut. You cannot do these at the same time. They bump into each other. So you're going to put that through the die cutting machine and you end up with this. So you have two different pieces, but you can see this is where it was cut out of. Okay, so now that we have what we need, we are going to go ahead and adhere the flowers to the card front and you know, just kind of decide how you like it. I think I'm going to go like that and I'm going to use my wet glue because I'm adhering to something that is embossed. So it has raised surface and I want to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. So there we have it. Put my glue on and of course the best part is I can I can fiddle with it a little bit make sure I get it exactly where I want. So here we go. And then of course we want to put our flower back in and we are going to do that with dimensionals which are not well, you'll find them as soon as uh, this is over, of course. I'm going to just hop over. It's a good thing my desks are right behind each other. That's how I have my, my setup. Um, so here, let me come back over. You can see my uh, cat decided to grab my dimensionals. She somehow picked them up and thought, oh, this is fun. I guess she played with it a little bit. I'm only going to use one for now, but you could use as many as you like your dimensional on and then you're going I'm just going to put it right back in place so that it pops up off the card so isn't that fun you can kind of see a little bit of the pink underneath if you want you can shift it a little bit so that you see more of the pink underneath but I chose to just sort of put it right back in place now we just need to put our sentiment on and for that, we are going to use a strip of basic black cardstock. And I am using the sentiment that says, you make my heart smile. And I'm going to go back to my Memento ink pad. And tap, tap, tap. Get it nice and inky. It's been sitting here a while, so let me make sure. And I'm just going to stamp it kind of in the middle and I'm going to try to get it straight but plenty leftovers if I don't oh look at that came out straight really not that hard to do especially because it's a clear mat and then using some paper snips we are going to trim the edges I like to trim it at the same angle but you could also trim it the opposite angles you could also flag it um, lots of different ways that you can do that and then this is going to go on the card with some dimensionals so um, I'm going to use some of the edges here because I'll just I'm going to split it in two and just put these two on here stick them to me all right get that off of there you make my heart smile. So there's that. And then one last thing. Of course, we need a little bling. Mind. What are the odds? Let me just see where those are. 
Here, I thought I was all set up. And they're just scattered around. But we have our new um, in color shimmer gems, and that's what I would like to use for this card. Um, and I'm going to use the ones that are the Petunia Pop. You could also use the pink, but we've got the Petunia Pop up here, pretty in pink. We've got Summer Sun, Shy Shamrock, and Peach Pie. Peach Pie. So just using my Take Your Pick tool, I'm going to pick up one large one, one small one, and then let's put another small one down here, let's put it here, just to draw the eye around the card in that triangle. Okay, so there you go. That was, uh, that's quite a lot of uh, stuff that go with this particular bundle, and I'm very excited for you to see it in the catalog. If you haven't gotten your catalog and you're on my mailing list, you should be getting it shortly, um, but if you don't get it by like the 25th, go ahead and shoot me a text and I'll make sure that uh, we figure out what happened and we'll get it to you. Um, and again, this is the, uh, I'm showing you the desktop, but again, <laughs> it's the Layers of Beauty uh, bundle that contains uh, both the dies, the stamp sets, as well as the masks. So I hope you enjoyed and if you have any questions feel free to ask. All the dimensions and everything are in the notes uh, beneath the video and I'll see you again next week. Thanks so much for joining. Bye-bye.